evaluate the following triple integral by first converting to cylindrical coordinates. So when we have a problem here that asks us to convert to a different coordinate system, you want to start just by thinking about the bounds that are given. And so we're going to first consider the Cartesian coordinates. So the Cartesian coordinates being x, y, and z. So our first differential is z, so we can say that z is greater than or equal to x squared plus y squared minus 1 and less than or equal to 4 minus 2x squared minus 2y squared. Our second differential here is y, so we can say that y is greater than or equal to minus the square root of 1 minus x squared, and it is less than or equal to 0. And then last but not least, we have the x differential, so we can say that x is greater than or equal to so actually, I'm noticing I have an error in my bounds here. This should be from 0 to 1. So x is going to be greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 1. So now knowing that we want to convert to cylindrical coordinates, the first thing that we want to do is to rewrite the z bounds. So we're going to rewrite the z bounds in terms of r. So r being the radius from polar coordinates. So an important thing to keep in mind here, we'll recall that we know r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So keeping that in mind, we can rewrite the bounds here We've got, I'm going to group these together, I have x squared plus y squared minus 1 is less than or equal to z, which is less than or equal to 4, and I'm going to factor out this negative 2 from both terms on the upper bound, which leaves us with a negative 2 multiplied by x squared plus y squared, and now we can replace those with r squared. So we have that z is greater than or equal to r squared minus 1, less than or equal to 4 minus 2r squared. So these will be the bounds for z in Cartesian coordinates, excuse me, in cylindrical coordinates. So at this point, what we want to do is use the x and y bounds to sketch a graph of this two-dimensional region. So use the x and y bounds to sketch our two-dimensional region R and R2. So thinking about those Y bounds that are given to us, we have a lower bound of Y being equal to minus the square root of 1 minus X squared, which we recognize as a semicircle. And not just a semicircle, semicircle with a radius of 1, and then even more important, we notice this negative out in the front. So this is a semicircle of radius 1 below the x-axis. And just in case you did not recognize that as a semicircle, hopefully now you'll keep that in mind as you proceed, but we could also solve the equation out. So we could say that we have y is equal to minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. And if you go ahead here and square both sides of the equation, this leaves us with y squared is equal to 1 minus x squared. And then rewriting this even one step further, we see that we have a circle of radius 1. The only thing you want to be careful with here is to remind yourself you did not come, or we didn't start with a circle. And we started with the square root of 1 minus x squared which is indicative of the semicircle. And then we also have that negative out in front, which reminds us that this, is, this region is below the x-axis. And then the lower bound here for y is, or excuse me, the upper bound here is y is 0, which we recognize as the x-axis. So we can get started here just using our y of sketching this region. So here is our y-axis. 
and our x-axis. And so we know we have our bound at y is 0. And then we have our semicircle here. Below the x-axis, y is equal to minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. And then to determine which part is shaded, we'll use our x-bounds. And our x-bounds are, are just constants here. We have that we have an upper bound of 1 and a lower bound of 0. Right, or even if it's easier, we could just put this in our interval notation to remind us x is an element of the closed interval from 0, and so here's where x is 0, to 1. So our region of integration is just in quadrant 4 here. So this region that I've just shaded is r. So we'll use this shaded region here to define the bounds for r and theta. And we can even see our smallest radius would be at the origin at 0. The largest radius length would be 1. So we can say that, therefore, our radius r is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 1. And then for theta, looking at this radial arc here, we know that's where theta is 3 pi by 2. And it goes all the way to 2 pi. So we have, excuse me, this is going to be that theta is greater than or equal to 3 pi by 2, less than or equal to 2 pi. And so at this point, we're ready to set up our integral. We have the bounds for z that we found in our first step, and now we have the bounds for r and theta that we found in step 2 and we're ready to get going. So we'll set up our triple integral. And again, we want to keep in mind that we're doing this in cylindrical coordinates. So again, we were given at the start, we had the integral from 0 to 1, we had the integral from minus the square root of 1, minus x squared to 0, we had x squared, the integral from x squared plus y squared minus 1 to 4 minus 2x squared minus 2y squared, and our integrand here, which we'll also need to convert, is x minus 2y dz dy dx. So that was our given Cartesian integral, and we're now ready to rewrite this. So before we proceed, we'll make a couple of little love notes here to ourselves. We know that the volume differential for cylindrical coordinates has a standard differential form of r dz dr d theta, which is what we'll use here to help us set up the bounds. And then since our integrand contains an x and a y, we'll need to use the conversion formulas for polar coordinates to rewrite the integrand as well. So we have that x is equal to r cosine of theta and that y is r sine of theta. All right, so rewriting this, this is equivalent to my outer bounds are theta, so that is from the integral from 3 pi by 2 to 2 pi. The middle integral is r which we know is 0 to 1, and then the inner integral is z, which we know is r squared minus 1 to 4 minus 2r squared. Our integrand now becomes r cosine of theta minus 2r sine of theta, and we have r dz dr d theta. All right, and we're good to go. Before we start integrating, though, I'm just going to, I won't rewrite the entire integral since it's enormous, but we notice we have a greatest common factor within those brackets of r. And so we can factor that out, which leaves us with this cosine of theta minus 2 sine of theta, and we factored out the r, so we'll have two r's here, so r squared. 
All right, so now here we go. We're ready to integrate. Step one, we're going to evaluate the inner integral. So we're evaluating or integrating here with respect to z. So we'll keep in mind that r and theta are constants here. So I'm just going to ignore them since there's no z in this integral, and I'll keep that out for now. And we're just thinking about the integral from r squared minus 1 to 4 minus 2r squared dz. You could also keep this integrand on the outside because it's constant. And this integrates to z, and we're evaluating from r squared minus 1 to 4 minus 2r squared. So this is 4 minus 2r squared minus r squared minus 1. And we'll distribute our negative here through to both terms giving us 4 minus 2r squared minus r squared plus 1, which leaves us with 5 minus 3r squared. All right, so now we're ready to evaluate the middle integral. So here we'll keep in mind that theta is constant. So we're, we're treating it like a constant. So the only thing you want to be careful of if you do it like I've been, like I have here, is don't forget about the integrand. Always check back after you finish integrating to see if there's a variable you need to consider. And in this case there is. We need to keep in mind we have that r squared. So this becomes, I'll keep this integral from 0 to 1. And we have, we just found 5 minus 3r squared multiplied by r squared dr. And before we integrate, we'll just distribute this r squared through to both terms. And so I have the integral from 0 to 1 of 5r squared minus 3r to the fourth dr. And now we're ready to integrate by a power rule. So this is 5r cubed by 3 minus 3r to the fifth over 5, and we're ready to evaluate from 0 to 1. So plugging 1 in, we end up with 5 thirds minus 3 fifths, and then we substitute 0 in, everything disappears. And so getting ourselves a common denominator, this leaves us with 25 minus 9 all over 15, and we have 16 fifteenths here. And now last but not least, we are ready to evaluate the outer integral, which is our theta. So again, we want to check back with that original integral to make sure we're including everything that we need. So we have 3 pi by 2 to 2 pi. We just found 16 fifteenths from our middle integral, and you don't want to forget here that this is now multiplied by cosine of theta minus 2 sine of theta d theta. And so again, these are general antiderivatives, so this will be 16 fifteenths. Cosine integrates to sine of theta, and we'll have minus 2 minus cosine of theta from 3 pi by 2 to 2 pi. So noticing here that we have the two negatives, we know that a negative times a negative will produce a positive. So we'll make that a plus. And we're ready to evaluate. So this is 16 fifteenths multiplied by sine of 2 pi plus 2 cosine of 2 pi minus sine of 3 pi by 2 minus, or excuse me, plus 2 cosine of 3 pi over 2. And we have some nice simplification here. We know sine of 2 pi goes to 0, cosine of 2 pi goes to 1, sine of 3 pi by 2 goes to negative 1, and then cosine of 3 pi by 2 goes to 0. 
So we are left with 16 fifteenths multiplied by 2 minus a minus 1. So we have 16 fifteenths multiplied by 3, which we can also simplify. We know 3 goes into 15 five times for a beautiful final answer of 16 fifths.